I'm George Reister. He's Ralph Amson. And this is the Pac-12 Apostles. And college football. Chaos is a plenty. I mean, insanity. And when we think about where we were three weeks ago to where we are now and understand that this is the new normal, people, the new normal. Um, Pac-12 chaos, unbelievable, unfreaking believable. I'm still in shock to this day. Um, the Heisman Trophy, there's a school in the Pac-12 that's getting another one, period. Uh, un unless he lays an egg this weekend. And uh, the transfer portal is popping. It ain't even December 5th yet. And it is already like people out there like, oh, oh, I'm getting in. I'm getting in. And we have coaching vacancies and we lost a legend. And one of the vacancies was filled. So we will start, though, with the chaos that is college football. Ralph, I believe that this is the new normal that we are going to continue to see like that it's never been easier to be good at college football, but also it's never been harder to be elite at college football because of the transfer portal, uh, coaching salaries and the, the length of the contracts with tied them to them and NIL money. One million percent agree. Um, you had a really good right start wrong podcast about that earlier this week about how it's never been easier to get good. Um, and used Washington and USC as as examples of that, but it's it's never been harder to stay elite, um, which is why we've seen Alabama um, falling off a little bit. And it's not just the two losses; it's a bunch of one score games as well. So um, interesting, interesting times. I am not the biggest fan of the portal. Um, oh, see, in the I way that it's being used. Yeah, I like no, and I, I like the fact that the players have more control. Um, what I worry about, and and the dynamic that I've seen more recently, that I know a lot of college football players and their parents, is a lot of these decisions aren't even being made by the players. Yep. It's parents getting frustrated that their that their kids, who are adult men at this point, aren't playing and getting in their ear saying that like that hold, holding still is no longer growth, right? Like, Correct. You you can't grow over time your feet always have to be moving they always have to be moving it's like the people who weave in and out of traffic uh on surface streets they cut you off three times and then you end up at the same stoplight together <laughs> they could have just stayed in the flow of traffic but they have to be they have to feel like they're doing something and i don't necessarily i think kids have the ability to handle waiting and growing i don't think their parents do and i think mm. that's that's a big well, part. Well, of the see, right I now. think it's the parents that make the kids impatient mm -hmm. because they're saying, hey, man, you should be out there. I we we ain't sign up for this. We didn't do, do this. And they all think that you have to be playing early and often to get to your destination. When I talk to a lot of former NFL players, guys I play with, against and all of that, and that the thing is, is that like, yes, ideally you would like to play early, but sometimes the struggle of not being able to play early is the thing that prepares, propels you to be great and willing to do the great work. So, and I remember after we played in the holiday bowl, my red shirt freshman year, the first game of the season we played at Wisconsin. And mind you, I played in every single game, at least probably like, 10 to 20 plays every single game that year. They threw a ball to me. Joey Harrington threw a ball to me at the beginning of that season. And I got absolutely demolished in camp Randall stadium. I mean, flipped upside down ever. It was bad. And I dropped the ball. I did not get another target. Not, not another catch, not even an uncatchable ball thrown at me that entire season. And I remember everybody was so happy when we beat Texas in the Holiday Bowl. They were like, yeah, yeah. Every fireworks going off in uh, like Qualcomm at the time. And I was standing on the field because it was dark. And I was the only, well, I don't know if I was the only player, but I was on the field crying my little eyes out. Crying my little eyes out. Everybody was so excited except for me. And I made a mission at that point. I was like, this will never happen to me again. I will never in my life 
finish another season because I was like, the only way that people will know that I even played, like I'm not even in the stat book. I was like, the only way people will even know I played is if they watched the game. I didn't even get a penalty that that year. So there was no, unless you watched it, there was no record. So, and that was a thing that propelled me, aside from being ultra competitive, having competitive people around you and all of that and being talented, it was the thing that was like, no, I'm, I'm going to work. Mm-mm, I don't like this. I don't like this. And there is a certain element of that uncomfortability that that needs to continue. And there is an element, like, like for instance, Ralph texts me before the show today. And he was like, do you need a minute to grieve because uh, uh, Butterfield from Oregon is in the transfer portal? And he's a dude that I don't have a problem with transferring. He's been there for three years. Still, he might still have three years of eligibility left because of COVID. But I'm like, he's a dude that has been in the system. It didn't work there. And he's like, I don't want a chance next year. Like, I've put in work. Maybe I feel like I should be higher on the depth chart. He probably got a degree. Yes. Oh, he's probably, yes, he's probably graduated already. And so he may be able to transfer twice (laughs) because he'll get a grad transfer and a and a uh, the uh, one-time free transfer. So I don't mind kids like like that, but there are other kids. Like I was surprised that da- Dante Thornton from Oregon, the wide receiver who had a huge game against, what was it, Utah. I was surprised that he ended up in, in, in the portal. So I love the portal. But Ralph, I am also conflicted and we talked about this earlier because there are good parts and there are bad parts to it. I mean, there are good parts and bad parts to anything in life. So the good part is players get to move. Teams can get better, faster, but then you're going to have teams lose players. And it also changes your fan experience on how you root for those teams and players. When now you can't invest three to five years into them. It's like a year to year proposition. Yes. Yes. And that, and I don't know. I love the portal. I love the control that players have. What I don't love is um, movement just for the sake of movement. Uh, But then, you know, you look at guys. So Isaiah Lewis, Colorado safety, two time PAC 12 honorable mention was hurt this year. Head coaching change. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. Why wouldn't he? Right. But if you're doing it, if you're jumping in the portal just to jump in the portal. And last year, I think we saw a bunch of people jump in just to see if their own team would provide them with enticements to come back to school, um, which is fascinating. But, uh, you know, I don't know, man, we're going to see a ton of movement. I don't think it's going to be a lot of players that actually play like it was last year. And if that does happen again, then I think it's going to be good riddance to USC. I, I, a lot of people already feel that way anyway, right? Because you had a lot of people who were starting and who were going to continue to start and star on their teams in the Pac-12, like Brendan Rice. I'm sure Die would have had 150 carries. I'm sure that Eric Gentry would have been all Pac-12 as a linebacker with with Arizona State uh, I'm sure that Washington's pass defense certainly could have used uh <laughs> some of the help that they lost to USC yep same with Colorado and and so you know it's one of those things where it's and maybe Oregon becomes that team or maybe Washington I don't know but it you, I don't like it when players that are already playing are bouncing I don't know. I I don't have so, to like it. I can so see the benefit. You mean like paid. Christian G- Gonzalez to to Oregon, or did you not mind that because the coach got fired? Oh wait, no, 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 no. Carl Carl Durrell was still there. This the beginning of this right, season. right. But there were a lot of staff changes. Yeah, right at, at Colorado. Um, there were a lot of staff changes. I think he he waited through a coaching change possibly if I'm not mistaken, but I, but I know that a, the lead recruiter on a lot of these guys was their offensive coordinator who is now an assistant at, at 
UCLA coaching movement plays into a lot of this. And uh, I don't have a problem with a coach who is getting paid somewhere else and doing a good job taking one red cent more to go do the same job somewhere else. So you would think that I would not be a huge hypocrite and begrudge players for doing that exact thing. But I, and you understand what it's actually like out there to be an alumni of a school 20 years after you've graduated. Mm -hmm. And I feel like some of these people that have bounced around and done mercenary duty, duty, if they didn't get their degree in their first place, because to me, if you got a degree to me, Jane Daniels is a sun devil forever. We have the same degree. (laughs) Yeah. We both have a bachelor's from Arizona state. And there's probably a lot of Arizona state football fans that consider us both a huge disappointment. Like what, like if you got the, (laughs) if, if you got the degree, then it, it, it is what it is. But, I think you know that if you had bounced for your final year, if you had played three years at Oregon and then instead of going to the NFL, you had done one year at TCU. Yeah. Would your connection with Oregon be what it is today, which is a really important part of like your sports identity? Mm. If I did one year at TCU? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it probably would be. But but on not quite end, as much. On Oregon's end, though. Oh, on oh. Oregon's end. Mm, probably probably not. Pro- probably not. How many NC State Russell Wilf- Wilson fans are there? Three. <laughs> his mom and, and his dad. Right. Pro- <laughs> pro- yeah. Well, probably actually, two. I mean, but there are probably some NC State fans that wanted him to stay. They were they were like, "Yo, he should not be leaving." He should not be leaving and that we need to keep him here. There were probably a decent amount of those people, but, but after he's gone, because I talked to uh, like guys from SC was talking to guys from where all all these other schools and they were like, you leave bye, (laughs) bye. (laughs) Uh, You you are, you are now almost like, exiled and excommunicated right. on some on some level like like if you want to leave peace out brother and that and so that's what i'm saying you know he, he threw russell wilson through like 75 touchdowns for north carolina state and he had the one really good year at wisconsin but what do you think of when you think russell wilson wisconsin yep yeah that's very and true. so you know it, it's that type of thing that i think you don't realize it until you get further out that the four that, you know, you're not making a four year decision. You're making a 40 year decision. You don't understand that unless you're actually going to go back and use the value of that alumni network and be part of, you know, it, there's a, not a lot of guys go on to have be like seven time all pros, like, like Russell Wilson, a lot of guys go and have a cup of coffee and then uh, their opportunities that they have uh, come with the town that they played in, which I think it's always really important to consider the community. Cause could you go back there and live there and be part of that? you know, business network or whatever, but are you going to be even accepted back if you went and did something elsewhere? And that's, that's the new reality of it. And we're not going to know what it looks like until we're 10 years down the road. And, and the bunch of people that you typically would see come back to have a home talking about hanging out with business networking with the people that are part of your alumni group until that's not really even an option anymore. Yep because they were at three schools in four years, you know, and that, and that, that part of it, that part of it, I, I wonder what it's going to look like down the road. Um, And plus I do, I do like to see people kind of enshrined as having their era at the school that they, that they pick. So if you're playing, if you are actually getting playing time and you're playing at a high level, maybe think through bouncing for a hundred K 200 K to spend one year at a place that isn't going to think twice about you because they're buying up everybody. You leave. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Unless you do something spectacular, like what, like Bo Nix, if he stays at Oregon again, he'll be an yeah. Oregon guy. Oh, for sure. And, he might be an Oregon guy. He might be an Oregon yeah. guy anyway. Yeah. Correct. But look at a guy like what would Dalton King, Dalton Kincaid would be just another person that played at Alabama. Yep. He's a Utah a, legend now. He didn't yep. take that Alabama money. He's a Utah legend. And I, I want players to think. And there's value. And, and, and the, there is value to that. It doesn't 
feel like monetary value in the short run. But I guarantee when you actually get out in the real world, even after your pro career finishes, if you are fortunate enough to have that sort of thing, though, that's when it really cashes in is actually while you're playing business opportunities, even more money making opportunities. And when you're done, that's when it really matters. Like, like yeah. who is short, who is Travis die going to be able to connect to? He didn't finish his season at USC because of injury. Oregon's kind of like, you left, bro. Bye. So, like, you you lose on both sides, it, and it, especially with a one-year transfer. Now, Caleb Williams, who uh, is now probably going to win the Heisman Trophy, he's now a legend at USC. For sure. Yeah, a legend. For sure. Now, I thought he won the Heisman Trophy this weekend. And granted, your team's success should not necessarily mean whether you win the Heisman Trophy or not because it doesn't always go to the best player. doesn't always go to the guy. It goes to one of the best players on, well, sorry, either the quarter, nine times out of ten, the quarterback or occasionally a running back on one of the top five or six teams in the country. And that's it. Probably one of the top four. And yeah, you CJ, gotta fa- you gotta you gotta factor in wins at some point because if not, we're probably giving the Heisman this year to a six foot two white wide receiver at the University of Idaho, <laughs> who who moved from tight end to wide out and had uh, eighty two catches, twelve hundred yards, and sixteen touchdowns. Yeah, so want- <laughs> yeah, he'd be invited to New York too, for um, sure. Yeah, I think we do need to expand the position group because the quarterbacks are not even always the best players on the team. But I do Agreed. believe that Caleb Williams, this dude is freaking good, bro. He is good. Yeah. He makes plays. He's got a special arm. This dude, huh, here lies a ball player. Um, I, I get I, more I get more text messages about his manicures than I do his play on the field. Though. Now, I don't, I'm, hey, and, oh, make, and, his, his, and the one last week was like F, F what, what did it say? Fuck Notre Dame. It did. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, but, uh, I don't, I don't have a problem with him. And he isn't, his mom is like a manicurist. So it's like, it's like a family thing, but oh, yeah, I get yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of dudes that are like, I don't know about him in the NFL. And I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know. And they're like, well, he paints his nails. I'm like, that's not, then that, you would. <laughs> do you, do you know how many people, well, first of all, I, I don't think he's super likable. Like in terms of like, I don't think that he has that super cool factor or the likability that that he wants to necessarily have. I think that if he goes in the NFL, well, when he goes in the NFL next year, that people accept you if you're good, just like Carl, Carl Nassif, he comes out. Are you getting sacks or are you not? Yeah. And if you are throwing the football like Caleb Williams is doing, hey man, paint your nails if you want to. Just yeah. Keep throwing the rock. None of those dudes, none of those dudes worried about Caleb Williams' nails would not take prime Dennis Rodman on their oh yeah on their favorite basketball team. <laughs> like, <laughs> Damn, that is a great point. That is a great great yeah. point. Um, but the chaos. So so we've already covered the Heisman Trophy. We think it's going to. Caleb Williams after Ohio state lost. And I, and I think it was the timing and the fashion that they lost. And there's so much chaos over the last couple of weeks in college football. And mm-hmm. this last week, it started with Mississippi state beating Ole Miss. That was a case. The last two weeks of Ole Miss losing, they are Lane Kiffin's fault for letting the rumors yeah. get out of control. I was like, I seen this movie before with Mario Cristobal. And and meanwhile, the, meanwhile, the actual guy they hired got blown out by New Mexico State, which is you got to try to get blown out by New Mexico State. Yeah, you got to try because the team knew he was le- it just changes when when your team. Fe- First of all, they're already college kids. Stuff goes up and down. But when they feel something off to they not playing for you in that same way. Now, um, NC State beat North Carolina State. Backup quarterback the, there still. With fourth string quarterback. Oh! Fourth string quarterback beat a Heisman contender. Yep. Ben Ben Finley, who is their backup punter, by the way, 
and Ryan Finley's younger brother who went on to play for the Bengals, he comes in there, he throws two touchdowns and he beats a Heisman contender in Drake may. Yep. It was a nonsense weekend. Yeah. He had a better, I think he had a better completion percentage, more yards and more touchdowns and did not throw a pick. Yeah. It was crazy. And then we also had, so UCLA went to it with, with, with Cal and then the chaos super started. Now, Ohio State, Michigan. I I thought Ohio So part of me thought Ohio State was going to win this game because I thought that they were going to be able to force Michigan to throw the ball. And you know what Michigan did? They could not run the ball, but then they started chunking it up over the top. They made plays, they broke tackles and get, I mean it was insanity. And then that was a blowout win. And honestly, and I know that this sounds outrageous, right? But I'm telling you, I know this for a verifiable fact. Ryan Day, he's not getting fired, but he is definitely on the hot seat. And if he gets offered an NFL job, it might be time for him to take it. Bec- he might he might want to come on over to the Pac-12. We got the money. We got the school that has the money. He might want to make his way over to the Bay Area. To to Stanford? Yeah, why not? <sighs> See, okay, so is Ryan Day a great head coach or was he born on coaching third base with what Urban Meyer left? They've Vic- looked they've looked good outside of two games. They've looked pretty good. Uh, well, okay, okay. See, see, here's the thing against Notre Dame. That game was tight early, right? When, when Notre Dame wasn't playing well. So anytime that they've played a decent team, I mean, even against Penn, Penn state, they started super slow against North Northwestern. That was a disaster. Um, they all that Maryland pushed them to the brink. This was not a, like their, their offense starting back to last year when they played against Oregon goes to shambles. It's, it's, it's like he can't get it going in the beginning of the game and then against Michigan and then Michigan literally just ran them over. It was 45 to 23 and it honestly didn't even feel that close. I, I'm not going to speak down on somebody who uh, went 11 and one this year. Like I, I, and I think if you were presented with the option and I'm not talking about now when you've already spent a year rooting for the guy, but if, when, when the, the coaching job opened up in Eugene last year and you had the choice between Ryan day and Dan Lanning, I think you're probably taking Ryan day. Yeah. And all he's done is win 11 games since then. Like it's not, it, it's, I, I understand the yeah, amount but he of hasn't had, that put, but do you, do you understand Ohio state's mm-hmm. fans, a little bit of questioning, is he the guy? Because it's easy to win all of your games, except the big ones. When you have that roster. Yes. There are more big ones than just one game, but I will say, I will say, they would not have had those concerns if they beat Michigan. If if your concerns are dependent upon one result, then they're not concerns. Then you just overemphasized one thing. And I'm I'd far be it from me to tell any Ohio State fan that the that the Ohio State Michigan rivalry isn't what it is. And if TCU loses this weekend, then Ohio State's probably going to go to the college football playoff and get another opportunity. And if Utah wins, that's probably the same thing that's going to happen. Is Ohio State's going to be going to be next in to get plugged in there? So. I don't know. I think it's fine, but if hey, if he wants to come to Stanford, he wants to come coach the Arizona Cardinals, I'm not going to stop him. <laughs> All right. So, and then there was more chaos. LSU got beat by Texas A&M. I knew that was going to happen. I rarely bet on sports. I bet big on that game. Money line because it you know how sometimes you just know that something is, and I bet on the South Carolina Clemson game. I knew what was going to happen. You flat out told me they were going to get run. I was yep. supposed to be at that game, but I just needed a day to uh, a day a day to chill. I'm happy for Spencer Rattler, uh, South Carolina. They lost Scott Satterfield, um, and and you. I've never seen South Carolina fans so. Um, it was it was interesting 
to watch their grieving process over losing their OC. Cause it was like, well, he gave us two good games there at the end. And then he got himself another job at Nebraska. We wish you the best <laughs> because they spent all year hating his guts. I went to a couple South Carolina games this year. I hated him. So, you know, um, but, but, they, yeah, that, but that when, when they look time. back on this season, they're going to feel real good. Yes. They put out like the funniest tweet earlier this morning that said number 19 in the college football playoff voting. That's our highest ranking ever. But college football playoff voting's only been around for a, a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, so. But go, going back to your LSU thing, though, former Arizona State quarterback, Jaden Daniels, Everybody spent this whole year talking about how, like, oh, they fixed him. Jaden Daniels is back, yada, yada, yada. Interesting stat breakdown on Jaden this year. Looks a lot like his freshman year. Oh, my God. He only threw 15 touchdowns? But wait for this. Wait for this. In 11 games, in 11 games against FBS opponents, so you got to throw that Southern result out, playing a SWAC team. Right. He had 12 touchdowns, 12 touchdown passes in 11 games. He's still the same Jaden Daniels. Oh, my God. He's never thrown. Oh, my gosh. He threw 17, including that game. And that's the highest that he's ever thrown. 15, that's, including the game. Yes. 17 okay. was his uh, freshman year. His senior stats look. Oh, yes. Like oh, my, oh, 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 my God. Yes. I, I was looking at it in reverse order. I didn't. Look at the years. Yeah, that's because it's the same. It's basically the same quarterback rating. The uh, same. Lord have his, mercy. His completion percentage went way up, but his yards per attempt went down, and uh, and and the rating is in the in the same territory. Now he effectively ran the ball in the SEC, which I think is going to get him some NFL looks. But if I'm him at this point, do you leave school? He did have 800 no. yards rushing and 11 touchdowns. Bro, he ain't SEC. no damn running back though. He's not a running back. So, no. and and he's not Lamar Jackson either. So, no, nah, he better take his ass back to back to school, because if 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 he goes out, he's gonna be like a what like a fifth round fifth rounder, sixth rounder. I don't know. I don't know about it. yeah. He's, he's not gonna be higher than that. I'm telling you right now. He's the fourth at the. Optimal, like everything goes right, he'll be a fourth round draft draft pick. If everything goes right and breaks right for him, and you do not want to go in in that life, if you have other options, hence, look at a guy like Matt Corral. Matt Corral got drafted in, I think, the third round. Mm -hmm. And if Carolina ends up high enough in the draft order, they're gonna take a quarterback. Probably he spent, I mean, he, he got, he got hurt this year. Yeah, but so that's that what I'm saying. Of- but, but if he had been a first round draft pick, they don't draft another quarterback. Right. But Matt Corral had, Matt Corral had uh, his time committed to USA, but in in his last two years at Ole Miss, he threw 49 touchdowns. Yeah. So he, he, you know, that's not that we're not talking about. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about like the draft status versus what yeah. the team will do. That's yes. what I'm saying. Like teams don't typically do what the Arizona Cardinals did when they uh, punted on Josh Rosen, but then they also saw Josh Rosen play as opposed to if Josh Rosen had been hurt his rookie year, they probably don't do the same thing. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like if he missed his whole rookie year, they don't do the same thing. Right. And only only nine quarterbacks were drafted last year. Only nine. And Brock Purdy, who had four years of proving that he was a good passer at Iowa State, was the Mr. Irrelevant. Yep. So would you would you would you consider Jaden Daniels to be a better quarterback than than Brock Purdy? I don't know if I would. So maybe a, I mean feels feel, feels very same same. Because if we're mm-hmm. looking at the quarterbacks that are going to be drafted this year, so Bryce Young is gonna come out. CJ yeah. Stroud is going to come out. Right. Um, people believe Anthony Richardson is going to come out. That makes no sense to me. Right. I, I don't think he can pass the ball good enough at this point in, point in time for him to be trying to come out in the draft. Well, I'm sorry, pass the ball consistent enough. I think that he's a dude that needs to go back to school. Hendon Hooker's gone, obviously. 
um, Cameron Ward is, is do, does he have one year left or is this it? He's got a, he's got more eligibility. Oh, he needs to stay his ass in school too. If I'm Michael Penix Jr., holler at the player when you see him in the streets, buddy. I've shown that I can throw the football at a very high level. He is going to be. I'm not. Sam, Sam Hartman recovered and threw 35 touchdowns. Yeah, I'm. With, I'm not. I'm, I'm not taking. I'm not taking Jaden Daniels over Michael Penix or Sam Hartman. Yep, I'm not. And, and so. then people love Will Will Levis. I I mean, it's Darren a, Hall is. Jaron Hall is better than Jaden Daniels at BYU. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and then that's before you throw in the great white white hope too in Tanner McKee. <laughs> or Jack Plummer, who is kind of the same yep. player. Yep. K- KJ Jefferson at Arkansas. Like him and Jaden Daniels feel kind of, you know, same, 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 same. Like so. Right. And 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 don't forget, like at this point, Dylan Gabriel could leave school if he wanted to. He's been in school forever. Yep. Rattler. Like it's like it's gonna get yeah. sticky around there, bro. So if you're not for sure at the top of the pile, take yourself. I mean, and I said and I would say the exact same thing to Bo Nix, who has been fabulous this this year. But I do think that there is in some people's minds still, they still see bad Bo Nix. Yeah. Or the or the potential for bad Bo Nix, despite what he showed all year. And then yeah. two years of good Bo Nix. Oh yeah, they're like, oh, oh, that was a that was an Auburn thing. They sucked. Right. <laughs> and we didn't even we didn't even we didn't even mention Max Dugan is a ten to one touchdown to interception ratio and probably going to the college football playoff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, him. T- oh yeah, I f- exactly. Um, and more college football chaos, and that leads us to the Pac-12. And we will start with what was. God damn, bro. Did... <laughs> you having a migraine? Onset migraine? The most unbelievable game. I Okay. Do we need the Sarah McLaughlin music in the background? <laughs> in, in the arms of an angel. angel. Dude, this was... Okay, speaking of angels, this was an angels in the outfield performance. Felt like the... it. Because yeah. when, when you watch this game, would you would you say that Oregon State is better than Oregon? No, dude. No, no. right? <laughs> I would tell you they looked really good in that first quarter. Oregon State looked really good in the yeah, first quarter. And then but... it was and then and then talent took over. And mm-hmm. then you're like, what the hell happened? Now Oregon, if you didn't watch this game and only heard about it, so Oregon was up 34 to 17 when the fourth with 14 minutes and 57 seconds after they kicked the the field goal, they were up 17 points to start the fourth quarter. They lost 38 to 34. Yeah. With and I guess you would call it a turnover when they when they dropped the punt because right. they got the ball on the one yard line. Yeah. Free touchdown for Oregon State, yeah. Yeah. And they did not throw a pass from the middle of the third quarter. And all Oregon needed to do, Oregon State was not going to pass to pass the ball. You lit, They didn't even attempt. They didn't even fake like they were going to pass it because they could not trust. I mean, I mean, I, and I told you this prior to the game. I was like, they're going to make make Gold, Gold Branson pass it, and he's better. I mean, and Oregon's defense and DBs and linebackers are better than Ben, ben Gold Branson. He's going to throw the ball to him, which he did yeah. twice. And the fact that they could not get a stop, I thought that this was – I thought that that was embarrassing, and I thought that the way they lost, it reminded me of – the Baltimore Ravens losing the game to the Miami Dolphins in the beginning of the season. It was unbelievable. I mean, yeah, everything that could go wrong happened, and then Oregon could not regain any momentum. But then they did. It was 34-38, three minutes and like three minutes and 50 seconds left or whatever. Oregon yeah. has the ball. First and goal at the five-yard line. I was like, as long as we don't give up a touchdown, this is a burrito, buddy. Mm-hmm. And they they ran the same gap scheme 
uh, play to the left. The the uh, back missed the hole once. He should have bounced bounced out. But I thought that Kenny Dillingham, who may have had his mind on Arizona State too much, put I don't think put so. together a a sequence. And 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 granted, I'm I'm getting ready. And 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 let me put my tinfoil hat on for a second, okay? I think Oregon fans deserve to be tinfoil hat about it. I just don't think they're correct. I, I don't think that we are correct either, but it's reasonable, right? That because it's better for Kenny Dillingham that he gets to go work now as opposed to a week later. It's better for, for Arizona State. Yes, certainly. Yes. So, certainly. so especially with the signing date coming up in mm-hmm. three weeks. Yeah. So, so that that's the tinfoil hat conspiracy. I don't think that he consciously was like, I'm going to run something. That's no, I think that he was not at optimal decision-making because he's a man divided on some like, 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 I don't think that he was deliberately like, Oh, I want to lose. Or so I, I think that when you when your mind is on something else and not singularly focused, that it can impact what you necessarily would have done in that situation. Can I give you a theory on what his mind might have been on and not just Arizona State? Okay. Keeping Bo Nix healthy. Because that seemed to play a much bigger factor in some of the choices that Oregon has made as an offense over the last couple of weeks yeah. than, than the fact that his mind has been on the Well, Arizona the play, State. I, I just thought Which, that you should I will play tell you action. He could, he could Herm, clearly play action. But when did Herm get fired? September 18th. Mm-hmm. Kenny Dillingham's mind has been on ASU since September 18th. Oh, you are, you are right. You are right. That's a good point. So Bo Nix, you can't use him the way that you've been using him all year. Yeah, but you can the play f- action and just do like a like like, like he was good enough to do that. Yeah. I, so I've heard, I've listened to, I've taken in every possible national show that there is that brought up going for it on your on your own twenty nine. I have no problem on with that. Fourth and one, and I, I've heard a lot of people say that. And one of the reasons that they give is we couldn't get a stop. Well, and here's it was the right play call. Bo Nix made the wrong decision. If he hands the ball off, it's a, it's a easy first down. Right. And I, I get that, but I will say this. Oregon did get a stop and then they fumbled the punt. So I I just, I don't want to hear that Oregon couldn't get a stop because they did. They literally did get a stop and then they fumbled the punt. No, 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 we didn't fumble the punt. No, 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 no. Yes, we, yeah, on the one. No, 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 no. We, we were punting. Or Oregon was punting, and the punter dropped the ball. But didn't Oregon also lose a punt on nope. the on, on punt return? Uh-uh, no. No, 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 that, that was uh, Oregon State. There were two major special teams issues for Oregon they 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 had a punt blocked early in the game. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah it was I a punt confused. block. Yeah, they got a punt blocked early in the game, but then Go Branson yeah. threw it threw it right back the next play. Yeah, so, I'm off my rocker. Then yeah. I'm confused. But what I what I will say is like I I I just don't like that excuse of like oh we can't stop them. I no, don't, no, 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 no. I, don't, I see. See, you didn't make it. You didn't make the yeah. excuse. But I've heard a lot of people no. say, well, that's why you'd go for it on your own. <laughs> On your own 29 while winning, by the way, while yeah. leading. I have no do, do you understand? I have no there is not a a part of my mind that well, questions. No, because that. you're an you're an ideologue on fortune favors the bold. It just didn't work out your way this time. And and, and when you watch the play, if Bo Nix hands the ball, what the what Bo Nix did is he anticipated what the the read was going to be instead of making the read. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh no, I watched him run toward three defenders. Yes. That so no so that's block. what I'm saying. He anticipated but but um uh, but the but Oregon State was like, we saw this movie last week. We're not going for that. So if if he hands the ball off, first down. But he was thinking about what happened against Washington when if Ty Thompson keeps the ball, it's a first down. So he, he anticipated instead of making the the read. And Bo Nix, who's been fabulous all year, he made a bad decision, and that's okay. It it, it happens. So I don't doubt that. I I do not. And when when I talk to Dan Lanning, I'm going to tell him 
Do not switch up what you're doing, bro. What you're doing is the right thing. Do not question those moves. You are, you, th this boldness that you are displaying, it is absolutely f fabulous. And you've actually seen way more coaches doing it too. When it's like fourth and inches and they have not been able to stop you at all running the football. Hey, move along, move along. Or, but, that, that's also a thing. They normally would have quarterback sneaked in that situation, but Bo wasn't wasn't healthy. So um so there's been chaos in the Pac 12 throughout the last few few weeks. Um yeah, it, it's just been absolute craziness. So much so that that there was a chance that Washington, Oregon, and Utah, and it looked like Two weeks ago, it was clear that Oregon was going to make the, to mm -hmm. win the, well, yeah, to be the, even the one seed, if you will, in the, the, the Pac-12. Bo Nix hurts his, hurts his ankle. They lose to Washington, beat Utah, lose to Oregon State, and now they're sitting at home for the Pac-12 championship over one, over one injury, really. Yeah. And... Now the Pac-12 is upside down. You have Utah versus USC. USC people felt like they got jobbed in the first game, that they lost by one in Salt Lake City. So for the Pac-12 championship, can and Utah they beat? No, go on. They have an argument. They have an argument. I'm not, I don't, I'm, they should have won that game by more, but they do have an argument. I don't think that they have an argument. It, it, okay. They're, they're complaining about pass interference calls. I mean, roughing the pass and interference. Holding and a bunch of other stuff, but these are Pac-12 officials. I mean, it's just, so can they beat USC again? Yes. This is such a weird situation because the best thing for everybody involved is USC to beat Utah. How is that? I don't, I don't think so. I'm actively rooting on USC. Well, that's because your two, your two least favorite teams will benefit the most, but we'll all benefit. Who is financially. that? Washington will go to a Rose Bowl if USC wins. No. Yes, they will. If USC wins, Washington gets gets the Rose Bowl. Well, it tip. I don't know because they because because they typically give it to the loser of the Pac-12 championship. But in this case, it'll be the highest ranked team, and okay. that's going to be Washington because they don't play, and that Ugh. would give Utah like their third or fourth yeah. loss of the year, or whatever. Okay. So, so, so Washington would go to the Rose Bowl, and USC would go to the College Football Playoff. We'd all benefit financially from that, but you personally would have to watch USC in the college football playoff and Washington in the Rose Bowl. Oh, I would but, yeah, I, I honestly I the the Washington Rose Bowl thing wouldn't bother me quite as much to be to be perfectly honest with you. It would be more So if USC wasn't leaving the Pac-12 and their fans weren't being so obnoxious about it like we're we're leaving the peons. We are we are we are better than them. You know, if they weren't being like uh, that, I would not care. But but yeah. because they got Lincoln Riley and they have turned into this elitist, we're better than them attitude, that's been my, I guess, disdain, if you will, for this season. Like, I have no problem with, like, I have no problem with their coaches, no problem with, you know, or, you know I'm friends with Leonard and Reggie, no problem with, with USC kind of in general. But it's been kind of how obnoxious that the fans have been. And for them to cash in like like that and then say, ha, huh, see, we cashed in and now we're leaving. Bye. We got it. We got a Heisman yeah. and a and the college football playoff. Uh, told you. And what honestly, like most teams aren't gonna miss USC, to be honest. It is what it is. Um, I I enjoy having them as part of the Pac 12. If they don't want to be here, bye. It's pretty simple to me. I I can't tell what I'm more annoyed by, though. USC fans pretending they didn't buy this, which you're allowed to, so yeah, cool. Or 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 Utah fans who are like going around saying "built, not bought." Yeah, nobody's giving us any respect. First of all, shut up. Yes, USC both is of literally you. leaving this both conference. Both of you, shut up. Yeah, please, please shut up, Utah. Utah, I want to root for you, and I want to. What I want to say is the same thing I said before the season, which is USC is leaving the conference because they're ducking Utah. Everybody's afraid of Utah. Utah is the new bully on the block. I'm trying to give you respect, 
but you're walking around here acting like an underdog. You are not. You underperformed this year. You backdoored your way into the Pac-12 championship, and you absolutely could run over this defense. You, it, in fact, in fact, I consider Utah the favorite. USC. I consider by... Utah the favorite in this game. USC is favored in this game by two and a half points. Two and a half points. Right, which is nothing. Yep. That's just the betters. That's just the betters who don't know anything about Salt Lake. The Pac-12 champion from last year, which returned the majority of their roster, is playing in the Pac-12 and, championship. And, and here's the thing year. about Utah. This isn't the little engine. Utah has could. very good coaches. And what yes. went wrong against USC last time, it won't go wrong on the same level again. I, I, I have a hard time believing that USC is going to be able to score 42 points against this team again. I think yeah, the answer might, is probably more 31. Remember, like, like 31 is probably tw- 27 to 31 is probably the answer here. My memory from the first time around is Kyle Whittingham looking like he wanted to never coach another football game every time they'd get two or three rushers through and not even put a finger on Caleb Williams. Yeah, he was like, he looked like he was in hell. Yes. Caleb he, Williams had Kyle Whittingham instantly go invisible choices. and be like, and then, you know, right. like, um, like who is that X Men character that can just vanish and then reappear? Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Yes. yes. That's Nightcrawler. He's that dude. He's the one you made fun of me for for saying was my favorite X Man because you said I I only like peripheral characters. You do though. You are okay. you are the fringe guy. Okay. Well, maybe that's why I'm upset about the Pac-12 championship and the two best teams. But I I expect Utah to win this game. It's really there's no die this time around. It's really Caleb Williams versus what Morgan Scally is able to put together. Yep. That's what it comes down to. If Morgan Scally can figure out, if Morgan Scally can figure out how to slow down Caleb Williams, they might keep put him, him back in, in line the pot, for head they, coach so of the future. I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. Instead of rushing and twisting and all that stuff on pass downs, they're going to take the alignment and just bull rush back. Because now Caleb Williams, who escaped the pocket, now has to go backwards as opposed to being able to go through the pocket and now escape toward so the line of scrimmage. Leave? So what do you do? Do you do you do you take your ends and do you rush them wide and have them spy? No, no, no. What no. do you do? You, is you bull rush. But everybody bull bull rushes because we we did this when I was in ten, when I was in Jacksonville against Vince Young when he was in Tennessee. And they do it against Hurts. They do it against all the quarterbacks who can actually move. They squeeze the pocket because Caleb Williams, his favorite thing is to extend plays. But when, when it's not there immediately, he's just extending the play. So now he is uncomfortable when the pocket continues to squeeze and there's no way out. So now his eyes have to go down to figure a way out. And if there's no way out or limited ways out, now you're going to end up with more of those sacks because they're not trying to tackle him in open space as opposed to being able to tackle him in a phone booth. Watch it. Watch watch that coaching nugget. Do you like Utah in this game? No. No. Okay. I, I What I, happens if Utah does win? Does you, so Utah would go to the Rose Bowl and USC would be what? They would end up in the twelve and two bowl. holiday bowl. No, 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 no. Okay. They, they they would get a New Year's Six bowl, and then oh, okay. and then yeah, and then you know Oregon, Oregon State, and so oh damn, Oregon's gonna end up in like the the Las Vegas bowl or something, or the L.A. bowl now. <laughs> After the Rose Bowl, holy sh- damn, um, yeah, bro, that's crazy. So. So I guess let's get to these coach. Let's get to these coaching changes real quick. Cause we're going to do, we're going to do a team by team season breakdown and some award stuff next week. Yeah. And sorry, we missed last week, but I don't know if you guys knew this. It was Thanksgiving. Um, so we, we, we're hanging out with our families, <laughs> but, uh, but the, uh, I, I, it's not my fault that you had to put in 120 hours of cooking. Uh, <laughs> th- Thanksgiving is George's Super Bowl. Uh, yes, it is. 
Yes, it is. And there's a couple people that asked me for turkeys for next year. So that so that feels oh, like the ultimate side business. No, I, no, I just fit, it just it just feels like a compliment. Yeah, for sure. And so um, what I'm but, what I'm actually uh, considering doing, like on a on a serious note, is putting my is like putting my brine together and and just selling selling the brine to folks. Oh, there you go. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into the coaching stuff. And I don't look Stanford. I'm looking right in the camera. I don't care what you call your head coaching position. He's just the head coach. I'm not doing the whole. <laughs> it is the it is the Lincoln Riley. And I'm sorry. It's the it's the David Clark uh, position of football manager, head coached by, brought to you oh by God. David Shaw. We, we've talked so much about David Shaw on this. He said that Thanksgiving came around. He talked to his wife. He thought about it. He said it was time. He said that he didn't spend all year thinking about how this was going to be his last year. I don't care whether you believe him or not. He's just not the head coach anymore. My question for you, George, is, is he the most successful Pac-12 coach of all time? Or do you consider him to be? Because he he ha- him and Whittingham are really the only ones that have the tenure of the full run of being oh, no. Pac-12 Absol- coaches. Abs- absolutely not. Oh, 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 in the Pac-12. Okay. Yeah, mm. not, Pac- not Pac-10, Pac-12. Even with the last four down years, would you consider him to be the most successful Pac-12 coach? And the Pac-12 expanded in 2011, right? Yes. Huh. I think it might be him. I can't. See, like, like the last four years make it not be able to be him, though. And right. then with, with but, Whittingham's first, I, I would give it to Whittingham only because, okay. only because he's go, his, he started out in the Mountain West and he's going this way. Utah's going yes. this way. Stanford went right. this way. Like when, when he got the job, they were up here. Then they w- they've been on a, they were like this. And then it was like, Yow! I mean, they did a combat landing. To like, to like, um, so. so I might give it to him. I will say he certainly went out his way. He certainly. So did do you think his that way. they're going to pay him the rest of that money? Because he said that he is stepping down, but that don't mean you're resigning. Why would they pay him? He doesn't work there anymore. And it was his no, choice. No, 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 no. There, there are behind the scenes workings and there is the act because they love David Shaw. He's a family, like he's a Stanford family. So they could have done him the honor of being, of being like, because, because remember they're a private university, so they do not have to disclose these terms. Right. So it, because they may have been firing him. But are you are you suggesting that they they're letting him go out on his own terms and saying we'll we'll settle up with you on the back end? No, I'm saying that they were firing him, but they are allowing him publicly to just because he's one of their own and everything that he's that's what, done. So we're, right. So what we're saying the same thing is basically like, hey, look, you go out there and resign, we won't fire you, and you'll get to keep some of this money. Yeah. So you're saying that 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 could have taken place behind closed doors. That is what I absolutely believe happened. Where do they go next? Where do they go next? There is good news for them. Is that their athletic director has now said, yes, we will dabble in the portal a little bit. So so he at least understands that they're going to have to keep some fifth year seniors and be able Bro, to going to be so I mean it's going to be so messed up like the top 8 players from the Ivy League every year just getting on a plane flying to the west coast that's actually a fair change for them damn that's a cold yeah. yes because because now you're like they were at an Ivy League school come on over guy from Dartmouth come on over guy from Penn come over your Harvard and Yale guys come on over oh man Thinking about like like a few years ago when uh, 
um, when one of the best uh, DBs in the whole country was at Dartmouth, Isaiah Swan, like seeing him finish at Stanford would have been wild, but yep. may- maybe, maybe, but who, do, who do you think they would, who would be a good fit as a head coach at Stanford? Cause they've only had really two coaches in the I, last two decades. I have our man floated a name out there and I don't hate it. Okay. I do not hate Chip Kelly. Because Chip Kelly oh, is about yeah. academics and personal growth. Like, he matches the Stanford mm. brand. He's he's not a Stanford guy, but he do, but he is on brand. And they can pay him way more. If you put, if you put his recruiting choir requirements up with Stan, Stanford's admission, they're going to have, like, a recruiting class of eight kids every single year. No, no, no. Like no we, need he's, a, he's, we need a, he's a used to six-foot-four kid with a 4.5 GPA and a 30 SAT who sleeps nine hours a night and he's not allergic to shellfish. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I mean, if anybody can recruit there is chip, but, but on a, a serious note, right? I think Chris Peterson would be w- willing to do it because he's principled enough and they can afford him. Yeah. And, but but I don't know if he I'm, wants to like like he won't have to get his hands messy in college football, which is I think what kind of helped push him away too. But yeah. he might just be be happy on television as well. Okay, so, so those two names are good enough for me to move on to Colorado. They've offered the job to Dion. That scares the hell out of me. But at the same time, I think it would be fantastic for George I Kliakoff know who, if he takes this job, right. I know who is going to be his OC. I know who's going to be his OC if he takes this job. I think it's interesting that it's taking so long because it leads me to believe that I was right, that he wants to stay in the SWAC. Or right. he could have been using this as leverage to like negotiate things with the SWAC and to get stuff in place just in general, whether it's at Jackson sure. State and in the conference as a, as a whole, and be like, "Look, I did all these great things for the SWAC. I will do more." College Game Day in Week Nine, the highest rated one in thirteen years with Deion right. Sanders on it. So. Why on earth do would you if you're the SWAC want him to leave? So if you're them, no, of course they don't want him to leave. I'm making of all sorts of. I am doing everything as a conference now. If I'm yeah. Grambling State, if I'm Southern, I want Dion to stay because a rising tide lifts all ships. Oh, if I'm Eddie Robinson Jr., I'm I'm making nice with Dion and kissing the ring. I don't care what it takes. Yeah, to keep how can around. how how can we fix this, Dion? But the problem is the longer that Dion waits, the more of these jobs that come open. When I saw Cincinnati come open, I was like, uh oh. Because to it me, will, that's like no, ready will, made for him nah, to go have will, No, he will have when whenever he leaves the SWAC, it will I believe it'll be for a destination job. So you don't think he's gonna go to Colorado, which means are you finally gonna get behind my uh <laughs> my Illinois defense? When I'm, I'm guessing that's their backup plan is Illinois' defensive coordinator, who is a Colorado alum. Okay, okay, okay. What percentage chance would you give Dion to the Pac-12? Forty-five. That's high. Yeah. That's high. Yep. Yeah, I, I think it's a legitimate. I mean, because he's, I know for a fact, he's called specific coaches about offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. Yeah. Specific coaches. So yeah. that means that there, it, that it's real, but yeah. I do think that the, that it's kind of Lane Kiffinish, which is Lane wanted yeah. that Auburn job. He wanted for the sure. Auburn. If, oh, if, for sure. if the reporter had not leaked it, he was going to leave. I believe that. I, I, I don't think we're going to get Dion. I think it would be great, especially for our TV negotiations. I think it'd be good for the Pac-12 overall. I don't want to have to recruit against him, but uh, let me just be the first to say congratulations to Colorado head coach Ryan Walters. 
Okay. That's, well, that's, if, if, that's if, the direction uh, I believe if, they'll move. If in. Dion calls, oh, that's going to be one of my first calls for my kid, though. I tell, I tell you that much. For sure. Yeah. And even more than a football thing as a character thing. Like, bro, you can go play yeah. for Dion. I'm yeah. in. So, yeah. um, Arizona State hired Kenny Dillingham. Right. He is a young yeah. guy. How how old is Kenny? 32. Okay, so that's a very young head coach. I mean, well, like Lincoln Riley-ish. Yeah, first first but, coach, first head coach to ever be born in the 1990s. Okay, so the question, though, is this. Yeah. Can he, because I do think that he's a really good offensive coordinator, but the challenge at, like, he feels like a guy that you would have wanted to take over a that young, take over a program that was not in shambles. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I don't yeah. think that you would have wanted I think, him to. I, I so I wonder. I, I think his can contract he rebuild it. That's a great question because between the players they have committed, this is going to blow your mind, George, because you know how many players it takes to field a football team. Yeah. Between the incoming freshmen that they cur- have currently have verbal pledges from and the players that are going to just be uh, a redshirt freshman and or true sophomore next year. So over the course of two classes at this point in time, as we're recording this, 14 players across two classes, 14, one, four. Wait, what? Incoming freshmen and current redshirt freshmen and or true sophomores, fourteen. Oh my god! So fourteen exactly. So 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 the roster is in complete shambles. So for sure, that's why I wonder if a person who hasn't rebuilt something before as a head coach, because like you look at what Josh Heupel did at UCF, right? UCF was mm-hmm. in great shape when when Scott Frost left. He gets yeah. the job. They're they're still doing good. So he was mm-hmm. able to learn and manage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 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 there was nothing he had to fix. Mm-hmm. And I think that for a young that it is a risky hire, considering the circumstances at ASU, potential sanctions coming down, and I think that that's going to make it much tougher for a young guy who is who has to navigate all that. Conversely, their options weren't all that great Correct. because of those things. So going with a young guy who's familiar with the state might be the wise move. And you, Dillingham, and I don't think that he would leave. Like, like I don't. I think mm-hmm. he feels like if he can get it going at Arizona State, even the way that Whittingham is at Utah, right? Yeah, I think that if you offer him the Alabama job, he doesn't take it. Or do you? Or do you think he would take that job? 10 years from now or five or seven years from now. Cartoon money is hard to turn down, but I will say this. He's filling out his staff with people who have Arizona ties. I wouldn't be shocked if Brian Ward, the Washington state defensive coordinator who has family in Arizona ends up being their defensive coordinator pick. I wouldn't be surprised if your guy, Scott Frost ends up being the offensive coordinator because he lives in Scottsdale. Charlie Ragel left Charlie Ragel left his head coaching position at Idaho State to come be with his family and aging parents in Arizona. Vince Amy, who played on their Rose Bowl team and used to be the the uh, defensive line coach of of University of Arizona, has been brought back to be the defensive line coach. So there there's all these guys with Valley connections. They're really trying to make it a hometown thing. Kenny Dillingham from the state, born in the state of Arizona. Like there aren't many people like this, but he's a multi generation. Arizona like yes the, so he he's what he's trying to do is get a bunch of people that have buy-in and truly love the valley they've not had that before they've had people who love being transplants to the valley because that's what the valley is it's a great place for transplants and then they had Herm whatever that was but like they have not had people who are who have they Arizona grew really quickly in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s yeah. The kids of that era who grew up in Arizona are finally old enough to be in power positions. And that's the people they have in charge there. If this doesn't work, nothing will. If they go too heavy, if they go too heavy on the staffing locally and they're not able to get kids out of California and the portal and everything like that, then that's going to be a huge problem. Mm-mm, mm-mm. But see, no matter see, what, I don't, I don't even they're see They're going to have huge problems no matter what because yeah. the roster 
is in and and again this isn't even the guys that are juniors and seniors i'm talking about the 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 incoming roster is tiny and the sanctions are coming yeah and i think the contract language is such that like once we know what the sanctions are and there's rumors george that it's 200 violations deep 200 mm, told y'all like it's, we told and y'all she, we did and I'm, i don't feel good about it but we did and so what comes next i believe the contract language is pretty specific in that like when it comes out if we got a three-year if if we, if we get hit with like three-year bull ban or something insane those three years we're not even going to like count them toward you're going to get oh. your money you oh keep that's the way hypo hypos is in tennessee it actually adds on when 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 theirs comes down it, it adds time onto his contract yeah and I hope Arizona State fans recognize that it's not going to be like Washington with the quick bounce back. They could have a good year next year, but yeah, like it's Washington not had York. a full roster of players, good players, and some yes had a whole roster of players, and yeah. and th- then they added a couple of important pieces. And you can't buy your way back. You can't buy your so look. ASU is doing what Utah and Oregon State do. They're fully staffed with people who are who are all about the brand. Right? Yep. They went to the school. They that shit took time there yep. Yep. a long time for Oregon yep. state. They're in the infancy of being good. Yeah. The infancy of being good. So I hope Arizona state fans what? understand they could get ready. And, be- and this is exactly what we were talking about, about the transfer portal and the NIL Oregon state as successful as they were this year. Yeah. If I am Jonathan Smith, I'm telling my quarterbacks to kick rocks, except for Throckmorton, who's a freshman, and then Aiden Childs, if I can hold on to him to say to, to, to sign a day, because the kid from Downey, I promise you, this kid from Downey, who is committed to Oregon State, he has been flying up the, the recruiting rankings for months now. And he is going to be, he is getting action from so many schools right right now if you can hold on to him you you tell everybody to kick right you tell jebbia you tell uh go branson you tell um uh who was uh, chance nolan holla at a player when you see him in the streets but i keep throckmorton just because he's young and i don't know fully about him i'm keeping i'm holding on to aiden childs and then I am going in the portal and I am getting one of these quarterbacks. I am getting my Michael Penix. I am getting somebody who can competently yeah, pass. Like if you have shown that you can competently pass the football, you are coming here. Be- or you gotta, if, Oregon if you're State is going to get rated because uh, yeah, Martinez, he may not be there next year because he's going to have bigger options. There are some of their linemen. Maybe gone. Like it I corners. Be, dude, I, they're corners. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if Arizona State didn't try to poach their own line coach. Yeah. Like they're 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 in trouble. This when you start to have success, you start to lose some of the things that made you successful. Then you got to be able to replenish. And if you are a quarterback out there, please consider Oregon State. Because last year there were a lot of really good quarterbacks. Oh my god, had well, what's his name from uh Pitt should have been there? Jaden Daniels. Lopez? Oh, no, 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 I'm or sorry. JT, uh, yeah, went to, JT JT went to West, West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. yeah they he should have went to Oregon everybody. State. This year, Hudson Carr leaves Texas, but consider Corvallis, my friend. Mm-hmm. Somebody, some, like, I'm telling you, and, and it's not it, it's not Jonathan Smith. I promise you that if he gets a quarterback that has a high ceiling, you're going to see that ceiling met. I believe that. I think we're starting to get to the point where people think that maybe that's not the case. It is the case. He had Sean Sean Mannion. No, 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 no. Sean, Sean Mannion was after him. Um, yeah, so as soon as he gets a quarterback, he will be fine. He will be fine. He's been dealt with. Um, but But the question is, he needs to get that quarterback as soon as the portal opens up because that is going to be a – a key cog in keeping this whole thing together because I know this is for, uh, for a fact as well. It may have diminished just a tad bit with that loss to, uh, Oregon state, but Oregon is going to be very active in the portal. 
like yeah, uh, on incoming guys. Yeah, and you're going to see a couple guys exit. You you already have By- Byron Carwell, who's a good back. He's going to be somewhere. So, but uh, he already knows where where he's going. Um, there are. Um, I expect the Pac-12 to be the most active conference because with Dicker going into year full full year two. It, at, at Washington state, I'm sure he's got his eye on a bunch of guys. Arizona state has no choice. Arizona came out and said they were going to do it. Yeah. Arizona came out and said that they were going to push a bunch of dudes out. In yes. The because, be, be, because they're going to be like, okay, look, because Arizona, Arizona needs a, okay. So they have a competent solution at quarterback, right? With, yes. with Delora. Is he great? No. Right. Because it, so he gets to, yeah, he's spastic, but, if they can get enough players on defense and some offensive line help, they are a problem, a major problem. Like that, I'm that excited. will take them from from oh five game winner to eight game winner. Yeah, and I'm excited because in the next week you're going to see a bunch of people jump into the portal, which means that the next time that we get together to record, we're going to know uh who the Pac-12 champion is we're going to know the bowl invites we're going to do a team by team breakdown and we should have some awards for you next week's show is going to be fantastic I cannot wait yes sir I'm George Reister he's Ralph Amson and this is the Pac-12 Apostles <laughs>